Let us now take a look at how to name type 2 compounds. The difference between type 1 and type 2 compounds is that in type 1 compounds, we know the specific charge on the metal in the compound. The problem with type 2 compounds is that most transition metals do not have just one specific charge. For example, take a look at these two compounds. How would you name them if you want to name them like type 1 compounds? Both of them cannot be iron chloride. So, that is why they are type 2 compounds. So, how do we name them? The idea behind naming them is to look at the format for naming type 2 compounds, which is given down here. We will write the full name of the metal, and then we will calculate the charge on the metal and place it in a parenthesis and that charge we will write it in Roman numeral and then we will write the base name of the non-metal and end the name with IDE. Let us look at FeCl2. Anytime you want to name type 2 compounds, you would need to begin from the non-metal. We always know the charge on the non-metal. For example, in FeCl2 we have chlorine. Chlorine is from group 7A in the periodic table, which means it will always have a charge of minus one. Now, in this compound, we have two cloning atoms. Each of them will have a charge of minus one, which means that the total charge of the cloning will be minus two, since there are two of them. Remember, the total charges on the metal and the non-metal must cancel out, which means that the charge on the metal, in this case, the iron, must be positive too, so that it will cancel out negative too. Thus, the name of this compound will be iron, that is the full name of the metal, followed by the charge on the metal, which is 2, Roman numeral 2, and then the base name of the non-metal is chlor, and we end the name with IDE. So, it will be iron 2, chloride. In the same way, you can name FeCl3. Chlorine, as we already saw on the periodic table, will have a charge of minus 1. There are three chlorine atoms in FeCl3. So, the total negative will be negative 3, which means that the total positive must be positive 3. So the name of FeCl3 will have to be iron 3 chloride. It is very straightforward if you calculate the charges before you name type 2 compounds. Let us take a look at CrO3. Again, you need to begin from the non-metal. In the periodic table, 
oxygen is from group 6a which means it will have a charge of minus 2 and we have three oxygen atoms here that is gonna give us a total of negative 6 which means that the total positive to balance out the total negative must be positive 6 that is gonna give us a name of chromium six oxide if you follow the format for naming type two compounds let us move on to the next one tio2 again you begin from the non-metal oxygen we already verified that oxygen will have a charge of minus two but we have two oxygen atoms in TiO2 so the total negative will be negative 4 which means the total positive must be positive 4 and that means the name of TiO2 would be titanium 4 oxide let us move on to the next one cu2s sulfur is from group 6a and in group 6a they all have a charge of minus 2 so we have only one sulfur and that means the total negative is going to be negative 2 which means that the total positive must be positive 2 however two atoms of copper will give us plus 2 that means that each copper will be plus 1 we want to put only the charge on one metal atom in the parentheses so the charge that we're gonna put in front of copper will be one therefore the name of cu2s will be copper one sulfide let us name the next one ni2 se3 as usual we are going to begin from the non-metal selenium is from group 6a it's going to have a charge of minus 2 so the total negative here will be negative 6 since there are three selenium atoms which means that the total positive must also be positive 6 however we have 2 nickel giving us a charge of plus 6 so each nickel will be plus 3 therefore the name of Ni2Se3 will be nickel 3 selenide and let us take a look at the last one here as usual we begin from the non-metal which is nitrogen nitrogen is from group 5a which means the charge on one atom of nitrogen is going to be minus 3 and we have four atoms of nitrogen here which means the total negative will be negative 12 and that means the total positive will also be positive 12 we have three atoms of zirconium here so each zirconium atom will have a charge of plus 4 
and that means the name of this compound will be zirconium for nitride. Let us now look at how to write the formulas of type 2 compounds from the names. Writing the formulas from the names for type 2 compounds is a little easier. The reason is because in the name, we already know the charge on the type 2 metal. So let us begin. This is cobalt 3 phosphide. We have two elements here cobalt and phosphorus. According to this name, the charge on the cobalt is positive 3. Now, phosphorus is from group 5A in the periodic table. It will have a charge of minus 3. The two charges already cancelled out. So, the name of cobalt 3 phosphide will simply be CO. P. It is that easy. Let us take a look at how to write the formula of copper 1 nitride. We have two elements, copper and nitrogen. Copper 1 is given to us, so the charge on the copper is plus 1. Nitrogen is a non-metal from group 5A. The charge in group 5A is minus 3. We need to make sure the total positive balances the total negative, which means we need two more copper ions. And that means the total positive now is plus 3 to balance out the total negative, which is negative 3. So the formula of the compound called copper 1 nitride will be Cu3N, since there will be 3 copper and 1 nitrogen. Manganese for oxide. We have manganese and oxygen. According to this name, the manganese has a charge of plus 4. Oxygen is from group 6A in the periodic table. It has a charge of negative 2. How do we balance out the charges? We need one more oxygen so that the total negative would be negative 4 to balance out the total positive which is positive 4 and that means the formula of manganese 4 oxide will be MnO2 ruthenium 2 selenide ruthenium is the first element and according to this name, it has a charge of plus 2. Selenium is the second element. And selenium always has a charge of minus 2. Which means that ruthenium 2 selenide would simply be R-U-S-E. Since the two charges already cancelled out and lastly on this page we have platinum with a charge of plus four on it and we have nitrogen which is coming from group 5a with a charge of minus three to balance out the two charges 
we will need two more platinum so that the total positive will be 12 and we will need three more nitrogen so that the total negative will be negative 12. So the formula of platinum 4 nitride will be PT3N4.